Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can implement chat functionality into your React Native app. So let's get started. Here I am in my Go backend, and I'm just gonna create two new models. So one is gonna be called Conversation. And Conversation will have these different fields. And next we need to go and create Message. and message is going to have these different fields. So with those added, let's go add those to our migrations. So that's gonna be in database. And here we'll add conversation and message to the migrations. So with that done, let's create some routes to create messages and conversations. So first I'm going to create the message route Let's first specify the package as routes, then we will add our imports. Next, we need to create a structure for what creating a message should look like, and then we'll create our create message function. We need to get the body from the request and validate that it fits this structure. And then we will create a new message if it does. And then we need to create that and store it in our database, and then send the message off to the user. And that's gonna be it in the message route. Now let's go and create the conversation route. Here we're gonna to have to specify the package as routes again. Let's add in our imports. Let's create the data structure for what creating a conversation should look like. And now let's create our function for creating a conversation. We're gonna to need to get the body from the request and then validate it fits this data structure. And if it does, we need to make sure that no conversation exists between the sender and the receiver. And if we get an error during this, we'll send the user we got an internal server error. And if a conversation already exists, we need to state that a conversation already exists so we can't create a new one. Otherwise, we need to take the text from the input or the request body and then create a new message. Then we'll create a new conversation and we'll add that message in whenever we create it. Then we will store that in our database and send that conversation off to the user. And now let's create a helper function. We'll call it get conversation result. And it's gonna query our database for a conversation which is going to have the ID of the past in ID and we're gonna make some joins so that the end result is this conversation result. And if we get an error during that, we'll send off an internal server error. If no rows are affected, we're gonna send off a 404. Otherwise, we are going to return the result and then we will also return that the error is nil. So here I'm gonna to have to go and create this create not found function. So I'm gonna do that real quickly. I just need to go into my errors.go file and we'll create a new function here which just sends off that the status code is 404 and we're gonna send off text saying not found. So we'll save that and go back here and we're gonna create a new function to get a conversation by its ID. We're gonna need to get the ID from the URL parameters and then we are gonna to need to get the conversation result using our get conversation result function. If error is not nil, we need to return. Otherwise, we need to get the messages where the conversation ID is equal to the passed in or the ID in the parameter. And we're gonna to wanna to order those in descending order. And if that query gives us an error, we're gonna send off the status code of 500. Otherwise, the messages from this conversation are going to be the messages we got from our message query. And then we will just send off that result to the user. Now let's create another helper function to get conversation results by a user ID. And it will be very similar to this, this function up here, except that we need to add some additional clauses onto our query and if we run into any errors we'll send off the same response same thing if we don't have any rows affected 
Otherwise, if all is good, we will send back the result and the error will be nil. Now we'll use that function in another function called get conversations by user ID. And we will get the ID from the URL parameters. And then we will get the conversation results by calling that function. If error is not nil, then we need to return. Otherwise, we need to get the conversation IDs from results. Then we need to get all of the messages associated with those conversation IDs. Then we're gonna create a map for all of those messages. And then using that map, we will assign the correlating messages to the correct conversation. And if we get any error with the message query, we will send off an internal server error. And after all of that is done, we need to sort the conversations so that the conversation with the most recent message is at the top and the conversation with the least recent message is at the bottom. And then we will just send those results back to the user. All right, now let's go into the user routes. And here we're gonna add in another function. This function is gonna be called get user contacted properties. And we need to get the ID from the URL parameters. And then we need to get the associated conversations where the tenant ID is equal to the passed in ID. Now, if we get an error during that process, we'll send back a, a status code of 500. And if no rows are affected, we'll send back nothing was found. And once we have those conversations, we need to get the property IDs from them. So we'll put those into this slice. And then we will query our database for all of the properties that have those IDs. Now, if we get an error during that, we'll do the same thing that we did above. And at the end of it, we need to just send back those properties. Now let's go into main.go. Now here in user, we're gonna to need to add in another route. It's gonna be a get endpoint to get those user contacted properties. And then one change I'm gonna make here is I'm just gonna get rid of create so that it looks like that. And now I'm going to add in my conversation endpoints. And I'm also gonna add in my messages endpoint. And that's gonna be it for the main server. So now we're gonna create a new server using TypeScript and Node.js. And this is gonna be for the socket connection between app and then server. So here I'm gonna make a new directory I'm going to cd into that directory and I'm just going to open it in VS Code. So here let's initialize a new project. Now we need to add some dependencies. So let's go yarn add dash d at types slash node and TypeScript. Next, create a new file called tsconfig.json. And we're gonna add these different fields into that file. And next, I'm gonna create a git ignore file. In this, I'm going to put .env and node modules. And now I'm gonna create my .env file and I'm gonna add in the different credentials for signing in to my database. And this is what it should look like for you. We're gonna be using these different um, variable names. Next, I'm going to create a source folder. So source, and then I'm gonna create a dist folder. Now I'm gonna go into package.json and I'm gonna to need to add in a few different scripts. So for this, I'm just gonna add in a start script and a build script. I know some people like to use Nodemon, so if you wanna install that as well, go ahead and create your scripts for that. Now, next thing I need to do is add in index.js, really index.ts into the source folder. And here, I'm just gonna say console.log, hello world just to make sure everything is configured correctly. Now I will say yarn start. 
and there we go, it's working. So with the project configured, we now need to install socket.io. So I'm gonna to go to their website and check out their documentation. Go to installation steps and we're using yarn here. So I'm just gonna use this. And we're also gonna to need to install some other packages, those being .env, expo, server, SDK, PG, and UUID. And we're gonna to need to install some dev dependencies of types slash PG and the types for UUID. So now within index, let's create a new server. So we're gonna import server from socket.io. Here we'll say const io is equal to new server. And we also need to import .env. So .env from .env. And at the top of the project, we'll just say .env.config. Now after initializing our server, we will listen on port 3000 and log that we are listening there. All right, so with that done, I'm gonna create a new file for my types. So this is just gonna be called types.ts and we're only gonna have one type. And we're gonna call that type session socket. All right, now let's go create the file for connecting to our database. Here, I'm gonna create a new folder, call it db. And in there, we'll create a new file called index.ts. And in here, we need to import pool from PG, create a new pool. And then we are going to export the query function, which will just query our database. And because we named our environment variables the way that we did, we don't need to pass them in when constructing pool. All right, now let's go do the same thing for notifications. So we'll import expo, expo push message, and expo push ticket, as well as db. Then we'll create a new instance of expo, and we will create an array for expo push tickets. Here we'll create a function for getting the push tokens of a user. Next, we'll create this function for creating messages. And then we will create this function for sending off notifications. And finally, we will create a function to validate the ticket receipts. And I just ripped off all this code from Expo's push notification documentation, uh, specifically their node SDK documentation. So with that done, let's go back into the source index.ts file, and let's get started on building out our server. Now within the main index.ts file, Let's add some additional imports. And I'm gonna go back into my types and add an additional field here called connected, and that's gonna be a Boolean value. Now underneath IO, we're gonna create a new session map, which will hold a number as a key, and these different fields in an object. Next, we'll create some middleware. So we're gonna be using the use method from IO. And then we need to get socket and next. Within it, we need to get the session ID. Now, if we have a session ID, we need to see if the, a session exists within our session map. And if a session already exists, we need to assign these different fields, the different values within our session map. And we'll set session.connected equal to true. Then we need to set the session within our map to the current session, and then we will return a function call to next. Now, if there is no session ID, then we need to get the user ID and username. And if there is no user ID, we need to return to the user that they have an invalid user ID. Otherwise, we need to create a new session ID and a new user socket ID. And then we need to assign these different values to these different fields on the socket and then we'll set this new session in our session map so that the key is the user ID 
and all of this other information goes into the object. And then we will just call next. Now beneath this middleware, we need to handle whenever a user connects. So whenever a user connects, we need to have their socket join to the user socket ID for their socket. And then we need to emit back to the user what their session ID is. And when a user disconnects, we need to get their user session from the session map. And if there is a user session, then we need to set connected to false. And then we will reset the user session within the session map. Now, whenever a user wants to send a message, we're gonna emit from their phone a send message string, and we're gonna pass in these different values with that string, and it's gonna be handled here. So off the bat, we need to get the receiver from the session map, and if there is a receiver and that receiver is connected to the server, then we need to send to them the message. So we're going to emit get message and on the user's phone, whenever we emit this, they will have a listener for get message. And then they will see this corresponding data as a message and a notification. So if there is no receiver, then we need to get the push tokens associated with that user ID of the receiver. And if the user has push tokens and they allow for push notifications, then we need to create some messages to send to them and then we are going to send off those notifications and that is going to be it on the server side for our socket server so now we can go into our application and set things up there all right so with both of our servers modified i am going to start them both up so for the chat server we'll just say yarn start then back on our main server run go run main.go and then I'm going to navigate to my application code and start to build things out here so the first thing that I'm going to do is get some new packages the first package is going to be flyer HQ react native chat UI and the second package I'm going to get is socket IO client so I need to add all right, now I'm going to go into my constants uh, folder, and then I'm going to add in a new constant for the socket. So we'll call this socket.ts. Now here we'll import IO and then connect to our socket server. But we're going to set auto connect to false because we only want to connect when a user is logged in. So now we need to go to our endpoints and add in that chat URL. So I'm going to put this beneath server URL and it's just going to point to my local host at port 3000. And then I need to add in some new endpoints for messages and conversation. So I'll create those right here and we'll create a contacted endpoint as well. Now here in endpoints, let's add in chat. We'll add in get contacted properties by user ID. And then we will create our various endpoints for creating conversations and messages and getting those conversations. Now down here in our query keys, we need to add in three new ones. The first one will be contacted properties. And then the second two will be conversations and selected conversation. All right, so with that done, I'm gonna go into my user type and add in a new field. That field is going to be for a session ID, and that will be an optional string. Now let's head over to our use user hook. And after a, log after a user logs in, we're going to want to connect to a socket. So here in our login function, we need to set these different field values to socket.off, and then we need to connect to our socket and we just need to import socket from our constants. Now down here in logout, we will just need to uh, disconnect from our socket whenever we log out. So we'll call disconnect. All right, now let's go to app.tsx. And within this use effect where we are getting a user, we need to add some logic so that if we have a user, we will connect to uh, the socket server. 
So here I'm gonna wrap this in some braces and get to work here. So first thing that I'm gonna do is where we are parsing this JSON, I'm gonna assign that to a variable so that we can use it. So I'll say const user object is equal to json.parse user. Here we'll set this as the user object. And then beneath setting the user is where we wanna set those different fields within the auth object on the socket. So the, that's gonna be the user ID and the username. And then we wanna to connect to the socket. So we'll have to import socket here. And here where we are calling get user, we'll say dot then. And this is where we are gonna set up our listeners for the socket. So our first listener is gonna be for get message. And that's gonna have a payload with sender ID, sender name, conversation ID, and text. So when whenever we get a message, we wanna invalidate the current queries uh, for conversations and the selected conversation. And then we wanna notify the user that they just got a message. So we will send to them a local notification. And whenever they get uh, they press on that, it'll take them to the messages screen for that current message. And we're gonna have to build this out, but that is what we're gonna do whenever a user gets a message. So here I need to import query keys and I need to import everything as notifications from Expo Notifications. And because we're doing local notifications, I'm gonna go into app.json. And here within the Expo object, I'm just gonna add in a plugins field and Expo Notifications is gonna be in an array there. So I'll save that and go back to app.tsx. Now our second listener is gonna be for whenever a session is emitted. So whenever that's the case, we're gonna get this session ID and we're gonna to need to store that uh, on the user's device. So we're gonna use the secure store to store that and we're gonna update the user setting session ID to that session ID that we get. Now the next listener is going to be for if we get a connection error. And if the error message is an invalid user ID and we have a user, we just need to reset these credentials for off and then reconnect to the socket. Now outside of this then statement, we will return socket.off for get message, session, and connect error. Now before I get started in building out the different screens for creating messages and viewing them, I'm gonna go create some types and also I'm gonna create the mutations and query hooks to actually get the data from our server or create data to push to our database. So let's go create some new types now. So here in my types folder, I'm gonna create conversation ts and I'm also going to create message ts now our message type is going to be really simple and then we're going to use that in conversation so in conversation we're going to import message type from uh, the react native chat UI and then our local message and then conversation will have owner ID tenant ID property ID and messages then selected conversation will have these different fields. Transformed conversation will look like this. Here's what create conversation will look like. And this is what author will look like. Now I'm gonna go create my mutations. So let's go there. And that's gonna be in hooks, mutations. And the first one I'm gonna create is gonna be called use create message mutation. These are going to be our imports, and we'll create a function called create message, which will make a post request to our server. And then we will just export the use create message mutation hook here. Within it, we'll need to get the query client. Now we're gonna to wanna to return a call to use mutation, and we're gonna expect it to take in a conversation ID, author, sender ID, receiver ID, and text. 
and then we're just gonna pass those variables in to our create message function here. And whenever that is mutating, we need to cancel the queries for conversations and selected conversation. And then we need to get any previous conversations and the previous selected conversation. And then we need to create a new text message. And if there is a previously selected conversation, we need to unshift that text message so that it is at the index of zero within the messages array. And then we'll reset our selected conversation data. And then we're gonna do the same thing with previous conversations. And then here at the end, we just wanna return the previous conversations and previous selected conversation. Now, if we get an error, we just wanna reset the query data to these previous conversations and previous selected conversation. Now on success, we need to emit to the socket server the send message event, and this will send the message off to the recipient, and it's gonna contain all of this data. Now on settled, we just need to refetch those queries, so we're gonna invalidate them. So that'll be it for the use create message mutation. Now I'm gonna create another one called use create conversation mutation. These will be our imports. We'll create a create conversation function, which just makes a post request to our server. Here we'll export our use create conversation mutation hook. Within this, we'll need to get the query client and the navigate function. And then here we'll return a call to use mutation hook. We'll need to pass in the owner ID, tenant ID, property ID, property name, sender name, and text. And then we will call this create conversation function here. And on success, we will need to get the data as well as the property name, owner ID, text, tenant ID, and sender name. We need to invalidate our queries for contacted properties and conversations. And then we'll omit a send message event, passing that data. And finally, we are going to want to navigate to our messages screen. And I haven't implemented this yet, so that's why it's giving me these errors, but I will do that after we create these different queries and mutations. So that is gonna be it for the use create conversation mutation. Next thing I'm gonna create is the use contacted properties query. So use contacted properties query. These will be the imports. We're gonna fetch properties via a user ID and we'll just return the data response here. And if there's no ID, then we will just return an empty array. Then we'll export the use contacted properties query hook. We need to get the user from use user, and then we'll call use query. The query key will be our contacted properties query key. We'll call fetch properties, passing in the user ID, and we'll need to set retry to false. Then we need to get the data from our query info, and then we need to set the liked field to true on any properties that are liked by the user. And then finally, we'll just return the query info and the data. Now I'm gonna create a new query. It's gonna be called use conversations query. These are the imports. And then we'll create a new type called conversations res. And this is what the response will look like from our server. And here for fetching conversations, we're gonna fetch those via a user ID. If there is no user ID, we will just return an empty array. Otherwise, we need to get the response from our server and then transform that response. So for each of the conversations, we are needing to get the recipient name, and this is going to represent the person other than yourself in the conversation. So if the user ID is equal to the tenant ID, then the recipient name is going to be the name of the property or the street, city, and state of that property. 
It could also be the owner's name, but I just decided to go with the property name instead. Otherwise, we need to handle the case where it is the owner on the phone and it is their side of the conversation. So the recipient name is going to be the tenant first name and last name whenever that exists. Otherwise, it's just going to be the tenant's email. And then we need to push that into this data variable, which is going to be of the transformed conversation type. And finally, we will return that data. Now underneath this function, we will export the use conversations query. And this is what it will look like. Now I'm going to go create my final query called use selected conversation query. Here are our imports. We'll create a conversation res type here as well. Now for fetching the conversation, we'll need to get a conversation ID passed in and optionally we'll have a user ID passed in and then we'll need to get the response from our server and then we'll need to get the data from that response and from that we'll create a tenant author and an owner author object and then we will go through each message and then for each message we'll create a new message and we're gonna have to set the author to either owner author or tenant author depending on the sender ID and then we're just gonna push that message into this messages array and then we'll create a new conversation variable below and return that and beneath that we will export the use selected conversation query all right now I need to go create some new screens so let me go do that I'm gonna go into the screens folder and this one is just gonna be called conversation screen Here, we'll just export this and we'll just return some text saying conversation screen. And we need to get that from here. All right. And then I'm going to go into the message screen. And I'm actually going to rename this to message property screen. Here, I'm going to do the same thing. And then I'll create another screen called Messages screen. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did here. Except we need to change this. All right, now I'm going to go into Index and change some things here. So this is no longer message screen, so it's message property screen. And that should be good. Now I'm gonna have to go and change that down below. Here, this is no longer gonna say message, but message property and message property screen. And then I'm gonna bring up types as well. So here, this is no longer message, but message property. And we can add in the conversation screen and the messages screen. So conversation screen and messages screen. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom to my account stack navigator and add in two new screens. One is going to be for conversations. The other is going to be for messages. And now I'm going to need to go into types and add those within the account tab param list. So down here in the account tab param list, conversations will have no parameters, but messages will need a conversation ID and a recipient name. Now I'm going to go into linking configuration and make some changes here. Now here for account, I'm going to replace this. So we're going to replace that with account root. The initial route name is going to be account. And then we will have these different screens here. 
And now here for message, this will now be message property. And I'm going to say message property here as well. All right, so that's going to be it for the linking configuration. Now I'm going to go into the saved screen and we are going to show the contacted properties for the contacted section. All right, so here I am on my saved screen and I'm going to navigate there in the app. And whenever I go to this contacted tab, I want to see the properties that I have contacted. So here I'm going to import Hughes contacted properties query. And for contacted properties here, I'm just going to call that query. So use contacted properties query. And then we can go down below. And here, if contacted properties dot is loading, we need to return loading as well. And then we need to go wherever we were searching for active index equal to one. So if contacted properties dot data and the length of that data is greater than zero, we just need to return those contacted properties in a flat list. All right, so now I'm just gonna go to saved and then contacted. And here we can see the different contacted properties. So now I need to set up a new tab within the account screen so that I can get to my messages. So I'm gonna to go to the account screen and then I'm going to search for account buttons and I'm gonna add a new one in here so that it's labeled messages and whenever it's pressed, we are gonna to go to our conversation screen. All right, so with that created, let's go to the messages screen and here we can see the conversation screen. So let's start to build this thing out. Now I just need to go there and I'm actually gonna close down a bunch of these tabs. So within the screen, I'm gonna to need to add in these different imports. I'm gonna create my styles underneath the screen and then I am going to get the user, the conversations and navigate now, if no user exists, we need to return the sign up or sign in screen. And if conversations is loading, we need to return loading. And then if there are no conversations, then we need to say that they have no messages. Otherwise, we are going to want to return a flat list here. We're gonna set shows vertical scroll indicator to false and then the data is going to be the conversations data and then underneath that we are going to set the key extractor to the item id which is just going to be the id of the conversation and then we're going to render out the items and each item is going to represent a message so the parent component is going to be a pressable component and then we're going to have a row within that and that row will have the recipient name as well as a date and then beneath that, we'll have the last message that was sent. Now for the handle message press, we're just gonna wanna navigate to the messages screen. And we're gonna wanna pass in the conversation ID and the recipient name. And now we just need to create these different styles. And these different styles will have these different fields. All right, so now if we go back into the conversations, we will see these different conversations that I have had when testing out this in the past. So now we need to go and if we press on one of these, we're just gonna get our messages screen. So we'll need to build that one out. So I'm gonna go there now. I'm gonna add in my imports. And then beneath this, I'm gonna create my styles. We're only gonna have one style here. Then I'm gonna set the props that this component will have. And here at the top, I'm gonna to get the title from the passed in recipient name. And here, if it includes this percentage sign 20 or just a percentage sign at all, I'm gonna replace that with an empty space. So that's gonna happen whenever a user presses on a notification and they get taken to the screen and the recipient name has spaces in it. So with that done, we just wanna set the header for this page to the title here, which is just gonna be the recipient name. Then we need to get the user, the selected conversation, and the create message mutation. If there is no user, we'll send 
the user a sign up or sign in screen, if the conversation is loading, we'll return loading. And if there is no conversation, we'll say that we were unable to get the chat. Underneath of this, we'll create a function, which will be called handle send pressed, and it will just create a mutation to create a message. Now, instead of returning that text, we are going to return a chat component. The messages will be the conversation data messages. On send press will be this handle send press function. The user will be the author within the conversation data. The send button visibility mode will be set to always. We are going to enable animation. And the text input props will be these text input props. And then for our theme, we will just have these different values. Now I just need to go back and let's test this one out. So here, if we just say hello and we send that off, that's going to update and that will actually be stored in our database and the recipient or the owner of 879 Loma Verde Avenue, that apartment, they just got a message saying hello. So there's another, uh, another way that we can create messages and that's going to be on the message property screen. So I'm going to go there and make some changes. So here we are going to get the use conversations query and the create conversation mutation. And we'll have to import both of those. Underneath this if statement, we'll create another if statement saying if conversations is loading, we'll return loading. And we'll have to import that as well. Next, we'll create a function to navigate to the message screen. And this is important, set initial to false, otherwise it won't render the back button. Here we'll create a condition to check and make sure that no conversation exists between the user and the property already. And we're doing that because on this screen is where you actually create a conversation. And if they already have a conversation created, we don't want them to create another new one. Now underneath of this, we're gonna create another function called send message. And in that, we're just going to mutate the create conversation mutation. And now here, we're getting this error because I haven't added user ID to property yet. So I'm just gonna copy that, go to my property type and add that in. So properties right there. And that is actually required and it is a number. Now I just need to go down to the submit or this on submit function within this format component. And I'm just gonna call send message passing in the values, well, values.message into that function. Now I need to go and find a property to test this out on. All right, so now I'm gonna go and test this out. So I just set up a new property with a different account. So this is jp12 at c.com. And here, if I go there with jp11, then we will send a message to jp12. So it's in Las Vegas. And here we will go and create a new message. Okay, so we've got something going on there. So let's go to the message screen. Okay, so that's going to be in the contact section within the property details section. And we have a row here displaying buttons so we just need to change out this row, or really we just need to change out the navigation, but, and that's just message. We're going to the message property, passing in the property ID. So now if we go there, we had sent this. Now we'll say, hey, I like your property. And we'll send off this message. And I just got this notification here saying, hey, I like your property, let's go check this out. And here I'll just say, thanks. And here. So 
So here you can see on and or on iOS it's working fine, but on Android there there does seem to be some type of delay. So it looks like I just needed to refresh the the app running on my Android phone to get this to work. So here if we say that, we're going to get these notifications and and yeah, that's pretty much how you can uh, implement chat into your React Native application. I hope that you guys found this video useful and thank you for watching.